Welcome back to the second episode in our Audacity uh, workshop series. And in this episode, I want to specifically talk about sound conditioning. What do I mean by sound conditioning? Um, let me just give you one example. And I go into my um, example files that you can download as part of the uh, comments section. There's a link uh, in this video, but also on our class website on Brightspace. So if you go to the AD233 sound file, this is the one um, with all the examples and you load the sound file 02, Summer Sounds. Basically take that and then drag and drop that into Audacity. Um, you can preview that and listen to that a little bit and you will actually hear these cricket sounds um, and a kind of a nighttime uh, sound environment um, recorded directly outside of my house in um, North Central Indiana. But if you listen very closely, there's something that's a little bit unsettling about the sound composition or the sound uh, recording, which is that there is this um, low frequency humming in the background. And this is uh, basically uh, the sounds of the city that you hear in the background. These are street sounds, these are sounds of, um, you know, generators, factories, um, uh, uh, cars moving across the streets, trucks, the freeway, and so forth. And all of this together actually um, is, is quite audible in the background of this composition. And ideally, I would like to get rid of that to create a more idealized uh, soundscape um, that I can use maybe as a kind of a background track later on for my sound compositions. So Audacity has a, a, a few ways that you can go about this. And I just want to show you uh, one quite effective technique here. Um, I want to use a bandpass filter uh, in order to eliminate uh, low frequency uh, noises in your recordings. And this could be applicable uh, to some of your field recordings as well. If, for example, you want to get rid of the hum of some um, uh, AC uh, units outside of uh, apartments or buildings, if you want to get rid of traffic noises, if you want to get rid of a, um, a low frequency droning sound of a, an airplane flying overhead during your sound recording. All of these would be really great examples for using bandpass filters and specifically cutting out lower frequencies um, to clean up your recordings and to make them sound um, more direct. So to create this, I uh, want to just select a part of the sound recording. Um, and, and just to give you kind of a before after comparison, I will play it back later on with the background sounds removed. So, so this will hopefully be quite effective. Um, so I, I select a part of uh, the recording just by, by clicking and dragging my mouse. And then I actually go into my effects. Um, uh, a section of my menu and I go to the AU bandpass filter. And so this filter, as you can already see, provides you with a volume representation and a corresponding frequency in which that volume will be present. So that means um, moving this bar right now would give me um, an emphasis of the volume in a very low frequency around 50 Hertz. If I move this up, it will actually emphasize frequencies um, that are fairly high around 6,000 Hertz in this case, uh, and it will actually cut out all the other frequencies that are um, on the lower end of the spectrum, but also on the very high end of the spectrum. And so um, to get started with this filter, and this is the nice thing about this, is that you may not know exactly what your frequencies are that you want to eliminate or uh, where this cutoff uh, threshold is for your low frequency. So what you can do is you can basically just play back your sounds and you can move this while the sounds are playing back in order to, to hear the effect of this uh, filter on your recording. And you can also hear already that moving this now more toward the right hand side, so emphasizing these higher frequencies and cutting out the lower frequencies will allow me to get rid of my uh, traffic noise or my city noise in the background. So probably right around 5000 Hertz uh, or five kilohertz is a good starting point. You hit apply and then you can uh, preview this effect also in your composition up here. So let me start the playback um, a little bit before I start applying the filter. And then when we listen to the sound, we move right into the filter and see what effect it has on the sound quality.
All right, so I think it quite effectively already reduces the amount of background noise and uh, really brings to the foreground just the animal sounds and the animal noises that you hear. Uh, if you remember Hildegard Westerkamp's sound composition uh, Kit Speech Soundwalk, she quite effectively demonstrates the use of these filters in a variety of different ways uh, quite skillfully in the studio in order to bring out certain sounds about um, the, the shore environment and the, the beach environment that she did her field recordings in. So go back to that recording if you also wanted to see how other artists are using uh, this filter in their work and how they connect it directly to concept and ideas that they express in this way. All right, I want to show you another filter that you can use um, for sounds that um, have a background noise that might be a little bit more um, monotonous or that might be a little bit uh, less frequency specific. So um, let me go into my example files and open up the traffic light beep sound. If you take this and then drag and drop that in here. This was actually recorded at the, um, I think it was recorded at the intersection of uh, Northwestern and um, Stadium. And if you listen to that, There is a, a kind of a noise in the background. Whenever there's no beep, there's a slight hissing that I, I feel like we can also um, work with and we can actually reduce in this recording. So the next filter I want to introduce is called a noise reduction. And uh, the way that this filter works is that you actually select part of the background noise. And you can listen to that first. And uh, then you go into effects and then say noise reduction and you have the software analyze the noise profile first and this will be only taking into consideration the area that you have selected in the background. So you say get noise profile and then you would want to apply that of course to part of this and again I don't apply it to everything but I want to show you the before and then the after of this effect. So I apply it to um, just a smaller section of my recording. I go into effect and then say noise reduction. And I experimented with this before already a little bit, so I have to go in step two and be a little bit more aggressive with some of these values. So crank up the noise reduction to 30 decibels and then the sensitivity I also had to increase to 10 uh, for that effect to take um, a better effect. So you might have to experiment with your recordings there uh, as well in order to get a kind of a, a good outcome. Hit OK and then let's listen to this one more time. All right and so again this was a very effective way to get rid of this background noise um, and to clean up the recording just a little bit. Any kind of um, small or kind of de detailed cleanup operation you can perform in Audacity with these post-production techniques without necessarily impacting the uh, sound that is important to you too much uh, can be actually quite helpful and can really make your final sound composition um, sound better. I want to conclude with showing you yet another filter um, that uh, can help you boost the dynamic range of your recordings just a little bit if you feel like your original recording may have been a little bit too quiet. And I want to go back and maybe uh, bring back that plastic crunch recording from the beginning. So um, if you can see the waveform right here um, is, is fairly low. So it is, um, it's not reaching that 1.5, so 50% amplitude range. And you actually might want to increase that for being able to, to hear it and balancing it out with other sounds later on if you start um, uh, adding more tracks, for example, to a composition that uses this sound. So just to remind you a little bit, let's, let's play this sound first. All right, and so if you just want to give it a little bit more of a boost and give it a little bit more of a, a presence or dynamic range, can actually also select again the area that you want to perform this on or you could select all that would be fine too but I want to just show you the difference here again and then in effect you would go to uh, normalize and normalize is an interesting filter in that it just 
boosts the overall uh, amplitude and the overall dynamic range um, without trying to distort your sounds. And so you can um, uh, also remove offset from your sound, for example, um, and you can also then uh, normalize at a, a certain decibel uh, a threshold. And so minus six is good right here. Um, you may have to experiment a little bit with that as well, just to see what sounds uh, good to you. Hit OK. And then you see how uh, this sound wave has already been stretched out just a little bit and will now have um, a, a louder and a more dynamic presence. So let's play that back here, starting before we apply the effect and then moving right into the effect as well. Again, this is possibly a, a subtle uh, change, but it will help giving you a better um, overall dynamic range of your recordings if you feel like they're a little bit uh, too low, maybe their uh, original recording volume was not set at the, the, the right kind of um, volume amplitude. All right, this concludes the second part of this workshop and um, I'll see you back in part number three when we talk about uh, sound shaping.